So I've given a lot of love to the Steam emulator. I thought it was a time to uh, take a look at Hatari. Atari's emulator has been around for quite a few years. Uh, and you'll find it at the atari-tuxfamily.org or something like that. You'll see a link in the description of the video. We're just going to go down here to the page. And you can go over here to the right-hand side. And there's the download link. We click on that. And we go to the download page, which describes a whole bunch of stuff. But you want to get right to the downloads. You come up here and click right here. And you'll go to the download page. And on the download page, here's all the releases, or most of them. And you come down to the bottom, and you'll see 2.4.1. It's released late last year in 2002. And there it is. Choose the one for your operating system, and you're off to the races. Now, I'm not going to go through the uh, exact download procedures because it differs for each system and where you want to put it. Uh, but just do your usual and place the uh, file, the zip file, or the, uh, wherever you want to have it. In my particular instance, I have all my downloads in an Atari folder uh, underneath different operating systems for the 800, 2600, whatever. Uh, under the ST, uh, there it is. So I'm going to go ahead and extract that. To create a folder, it puts it into another folder. You can move it from there, do whatever you want. But all you have to do is click on the final folder to uh, start running your uh, emulator. But before you go off and run it, uh, there's a couple of things I want to talk about. One is, is that there's a lot of readme files in here. You should look around and read those. The next thing is, is that uh, you should also be aware where it stores its configuration. It used to do it here in the under the user directory in its own uh, file folder called .hatari, but now it's put it's in the app data, which is where it should be. If you go down here and you scroll down to Atari, uh, there in the apps local, there it is, and you'll see there's a config file already there, because uh, I already ran it one time. So it creates that on the fly. So uh, I had a bunch of files from in my last configuration where it was in the other directory I talked about. So I'm going to copy these over and put them into the new location uh, so that I can utilize them from there so I don't lose all those configurations. OK, moving on. If this is truly your first time running it, or you've removed those configurations, there's no configurations there, and you're on Windows, you're going to get this because it's not registered with Windows. It's not recognized. But you click on the Continue, then come down to the bottom and click on Run Anyway. Now, Atari will launch. It will run using the EMU TOS operating system that ships with it. And it'll come up and it'll boot and uh, it'll run fine like that. But for more of the people, you'll want to go out and find the original TOS uh, um, operating system and use it. Oh, we're going to cover a couple of things first before we go through the configuration screens in its proper order. But you notice as I drag my mouse left and right, it picks up on the location of the window and it actually makes it easier to use the mouse is in the correct position. So with that, we're going to hit F12 to bring up the configuration screen. And like I said, instead of doing uh, this is an order, I'm going to skip to the Atari screen and click off Show Borders here, back to the main menu, and say OK, and boom, we get rid of those pesky larger uh, borders all around it. And now that I've made a change, uh, this is where we want to save that configuration we talked about. We hit Save, and you see there it is in the App Data directory. And I say OK and it will save that configuration without the borders. So the next time that I restart this, uh, it should come up and read that configuration file that's set and come up with uh, no borders. You can see already, uh, there it is. It comes up and uh, without those uh, wide borders around. So the configuration saving it worked. So now we got that, let's go back to the configuration screen. And by the way, you have to have this Windows Focus. You know, there's a white bar up there. I have to click on it so that the F12 key will take effect inside the program. So I've got the focus there. I hit F12, and there's the rest of the, the main menu. I'm going to click on System first, and then I'm going to switch it to the STE instead of uh, the ST. Uh, it's more compatible for most programs. So I'm going to do that. And then also, the I'm just going to turn on the blitter just because some programs uh, could use it. And I'm going to go back to the main menu from there. I'm going to go to the, next to the CPU. I'm going to leave it on the 6800. I don't need the more advanced stuff. And same with the speed. I'll leave it the way it is. Leave all the prefetch alone and, and all that. Just go back to the main menu. You can play with that a little bit later if you want to tweak some things. 
I'm also going to change the, the TOS version. It's, instead of EMU TOS, I'm going to go look for a mine. Now, I have all mine in the TOS directory outside of all my emulators. I just go down here, and I'm in the U.S., so I'll, guess what I'm going to use? TOS 206 U.S., uh, which is uh, the latest of the U.S. TOSs um, for standard operations. Okay, that's enough of those for now. I'm going to go back to the main menu, and I'm going to go ahead and do the uh, save again. I'm going to go back here. I'm going to say, okay, save the configuration. I'm going to leave it there. That's how I config is going to be my default. And say, okay, and we're going to reboot. And now that we reboot, we're going to see the uh, Atari TOS logo come up. I hit the space bar to abort uh, the memory test. Uh, and then we're going to see the desktop appear here shortly. Well, maybe not shortly, but we're going to see the desktop appear. And here we are. Now, if you first boot, it's going to be a smaller window probably. So you can drag the corners of the Atari emulator very easily to make it whatever size you want. Uh, and drag it to wherever you want on the screen. Uh, so you, it's the size that you want for your particular situation. And I want to reiterate, uh, when you first fire it up, you may have to, especially after resizing, you have to relearn the mouse to, to its particular size. You go off to each side, uh, it'll figure out uh, where your mouse is in relationship. And then when you enter back in, the mouse will be on the correct side of the screen. Okay, continue on the menu. We're going to go down to memory. I always put it at the 4 megabytes. Uh, there's some hacks for bigger sizes, but 4 meg will basically cover any program you want to run on the ST. And you can also, there's a RAM size for the TT RAM. You can adjust that there. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and, you can, oh, by the way, you can change snapshot where that's being done at. Uh, all the different kind of things uh, I want to do. So we'll go back to the main menu. And we're going to go on to, oh, you know what, let's go back to memory for a second. Down here, I forgot. Load, save, state as startup. So we'll take a snapshot of whatever program's running. Uh, when you exit or when you start up again, uh, it'll reload it. can be handy at times. So uh, back to the main menu. Next is the floppy disks. And we see here it's predefined with the standard A and B drives. But there's nothing assigned to them yet. So if we want to do that, we need to go ahead the F12 key again, and go to the button that says floppy disks of all things. Click on that, and there we have, they're already enabled, and they're already double-sided. So you can browse for, uh, you can eject it if you already have something else, but you can also go ahead and browse up and down for your, uh, wherever you store them. On my hard drives, I have a D drive, which stores all my extra stuff. So if I go inside of uh, my D drive, uh, or archives, it depends, uh, there's some disks there. There's a font DOS disk or Dream. So I can click on that and it'll be assigned uh, to my A drive. So once I click on that, you'll see that it says it's there. You see it underneath the A drive up there. It's assigned there. So I go, and by the way, there's default uh, image directory if you want to store all of them there. When you open up the window to browse for disks, it'll be in that directory. Um, so we can move on to hard disks, and there's ASCII and SCSI and IDE. I use gem drives exclusively. It imitates your uh, drive that you had on your Atari. And so we'll go over here, and you'll see that I have a, not that hard drive there. That's an old one. But if I go back up again, I go hard drives, and I have a different configuration for each boot that I want to do. I'll have a link here for my other video, which shows how to set this up so you don't have to do multi-boot managers or anything. You simply boot to whatever directory uh, you want, and boom, you have that configuration ready. Okay, so let's go on to the uh, screens. Now, I already did the uh, Atari screen, got rid of the borders and all that. This is the Hotari screen, where you can set it up for full screen. Make sure you keep your resolution right. I don't use this too much, but there is a configuration for recording AVIs and screenshot and all that stuff here. Uh, so you want to check out these here. Now going back to the main menu, we're going to go up to the next column. Joysticks, if you have a joystick enabled and it's connected, it'll appear down here. And you can select that as a real joystick entry. Uh, up here is uh, different things, different configurations, depending upon what you want. So you just want to change that to whatever you want. 
and say use real joystick or use one of those. Okay, keyboard, same thing. They have keyboard mappings for different languages. I just use the English one, of course. Uh, so you just have to find your files and map to them there. Now, printers. Let's talk about that. We go to back to the main menu, and we'll go to not just printers, actually. It's your old printer emulation, RS-232 and MIDI. Of course, my system doesn't have a printer port in RS-232, but you can map to files. And same with your MIDI. I'm not going to go into those in detail, because, again, I very rarely use them. And the last configuration is sound. Uh, and it's sort of default. You just leave it for whatever it is on your system. It should be pretty good. Uh, you can play around with this later on uh, when we've got a little more advanced things and want to save a different place. Uh, but uh, for the most part, the standard settings will work. Again, when you make these changes, or maybe sometimes in between making a bunch of changes, you just want to do with a save config file. So that the next time it boots, all these changes you've done are the same. Now, in particular, you may want to go here and change the name of your file to something else. Depends upon how your configuration is. So I'm going to say OK, and I'm good to go. Hey, while we're here, let's check on the A drive. Boom, there it is. It has the files that are in that ST file you saw earlier. And also while we're here, uh, let's go ahead and uh, uh, check on that uh, C drive. We go over here to the hard disk. I'm going to go ahead and, I didn't save it last time, so I'm going to browse for it. And I'm going to go find that uh, those drive I want to boot to. And there's my hard drives, and I'm going to choose one of these. I'm going to say game is medium, and there's the files. I'm going to say OK. So let's go ahead back to the main menu, save the configuration. Again, give it whatever name you want if you want to. It says to reboot. We're using it. And we come up here and does the test, does all those kind of things. And then we end up back at the uh, toss. But you'll notice things that certain things ran just then. And here I am sitting here at a uh, medium resolution like I selected for the games. So let's go check uh, the drives. Uh, let's go up here to the C drive. And we can double click on it. And when you do that, you'll see the same drive we had here. You'll see this is the uh, games medium drive on your uh, system. If you come back here to the uh, emulator and I double click. Sure enough, they'll, you'll see, let me move this, and there you are. You're looking right at your hard drive. So now that we're looking at that, uh, let's go ahead and try this one. We're going to go over here and run the Empire Strikes Back uh, program, and it's going to come up. And sure enough, we're here, and we're going to pull a trigger. Basically, uh, just use your keyboard space bar, use your mouse to click over here. Click on Wave 1. Now I have the sound turned off, but it emulates the sound as well. Uh, and you can play your game uh, just using your mouse. It's a great game, by the way. Uh, but as you can see, Atari emulates it perfectly. So like I do for most Atari games, once I'm done playing the game or whatever I'm using and saving whatever files, if it's like an application, if I just want to quit, I just can just close the window. So that's what I'm going to do here with... Uh, uh, the Atari. I'm going to click up here. It's going to say, do you really want to quit? Say yes. And I'm just going to reboot it. And when I reboot it, it's going to come back up and there's still the same configuration because I'm looking at the same hard drive uh, to boot from. So, okay, now I'm going to change screens. I'm going to go over here to change it to the mono for the high resolution. So uh, if I go up to the here and say I want to do a mono screen, okay, say okay, and click on OK here, uh, you'll see that I'm going to change to where I have my high resolution apps at. Now, once I change that, okay, I'm going, once I have the new directory, the uh, C drive with a high here, okay, I'm going to want to save this configuration, but I don't want to overwrite my default. I need to give it a new name. So I'm going to click up here and you can change it here. You can use your arrow keys to move around. I'm going to say Atari High. Okay, and then I can save this particular configuration. And when we go back in, you'll see there it is, Atari High. So you can use that next time when you want to get to that particular configuration. Okay, now the one I chosen isn't exactly the right one for what I want to demonstrate, and I'll explain that here. Don't forget in Atari applications, some of them require GDOS. 
And if you don't have it set up correctly, and in particular one, the C apps high does not have GDOS, okay? It's just a high resolution. So when I try to run a GDOS program, it tells me, oh, no go. So let's take a look. So instead, I need to choose a different uh, directory on the C drive that has GDOS. So if I go over to hard disk again, okay, I'm, again, I'm in mono still. If I go to hard disks, and you'll see that I have, I'm here, I don't want to be here. That's just a regular just for high. But if it's GDOS, I use G+, so th there it is. If I use this as a hard drive, and I go back to the main menu, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, save the configuration, but I'm going to call it high GDOS right here. Say OK. Now if I reboot, and I should have it come up in high resolution. GDOS is loaded and the hard drive pointing uh, to the application directory that I want. So we'll see as it comes up here uh, if I did this right. And there's GDOS and here and oh, there it is. It even has Easy Draw ready to go, the one I want to demonstrate. So if I double click on it, there's GDOS loading. Everything's perfectly fine and I can run this program. So to demonstrate this, uh, to show that it's actually working, I'm going to load up a file. Did these back in 1983. I was in the SR-71 program when I was in the Air Force. Uh, I drew that, some Enterprise, a space shuttle. I drew a bunch of these uh, here. And you'll see here, uh, here's the Blackbird drawing that I did. Uh, and if I do the entire page, it renders perfectly. GDOS is working or G plus is working. An easy draw is rendering the image. And one last configuration, let's exit uh, Easy Draw. We we'll go here to quit and say, no, I don't care about saving it. Come over here and I'm going to go to F12 again. And I'm going to say, oh, what do I want to do? I want to boot to a hard drive. Okay, I want to go here and change the uh, hard drive uh, somewhere else. So I go over here and I want to go to Games Medium again, right? Say, okay. And Everything should be fine. Change this to RGB and back to the main menu. Say OK. Reset the machine. Boom. I'm doing that. And then we'll see that machine comes back up in the medium resolution that I want, ready to play some games. But wait, why did I have to go back into the menu to change each individual setting? I didn't. If we go back in here and we go to F12, and we use the uh, load config function. We're not going to go into hard disk or the screen size, you know, change this to mono and all that stuff. We're simply going to go to load config and find the high DOS, high GDOS program. Say OK. And you don't even have to hit the reset machine. Just click on OK. It says, do you want to do this? And you say OK. And boom, you can switch between medium and high and low, whichever individual configuration you want. If you have a TT configuration, you know, uh, whatever, a Falcon, whatever you have selected, then name the file that. You select that file, and your system will reboot using those, and boom, I'm back in high resolution and using GDOS. So there you have it, how to use the Atari emulator to run your favorite ST program, or for that matter, Falcon or TT. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it. And if you want more, you can just click on subscribe. You can also follow me on Facebook or Twitter. The links are in the description of the video.